Hi everybody, welcome back to Speaking Spurs with me, Kieran, talking all things Tottenham. Today we're going to be talking about the draw with Everton from last night, that two-all draw at Goodison Park. And uh, is it all over now? I said we needed to win pretty much all the games coming into the end of the season now. So we've lost to Manchester United and then picked up a draw against Everton. And they arguably were our most difficult games up until the last game of the season when we play Leicester. So there's still a chance that we're going to pick up a decent chunk of points leading into that last game of the season. But once again, it's down to everybody else around us. So we haven't moved anywhere in the league. I only picked up one point in the last two games. Everybody else has still got to play this weekend. So, you know, we'll reassess after that. But I think we can honestly say that it's done and dusted now. Champions League is 100% over. As much as I was optimistic that there was still a chance, obviously mathematically there's still a chance, but you can't see all these other teams around us dropping that many points. There's just there's too many people that can jump into it now. And I think some teams have got better, let's say, hunger, desire, mentality to push on and grab those spots. So we'll run through the lineup, a little bit about the game, a few little bits on Harry Kane, talk about some stats, and then finish off with what Jose had to say, and then just talk about the matches that we've got upcoming. So with the lineup, I predicted my lineup based on the formation that we normally play, and I've had discussions with many people, and I think I may have mentioned it in the last video that I wouldn't object to going three at the back. So he did go three at the back. And when you look at the lineup, you can see why he's gone with the people he has. So you've got Larice in goal. Our three centre backs were Toby Dyer and Rodon. And then our wing backs were Aurier and Reguillon. So far, I've got no issues with that team. A lot of people in their predicted lineups had Tanganga. I can understand why you've done that. Tanganga is a good young prospect. However, Aurier is more proven going forward. And with three at the back, you wouldn't expect there'd be too many problems when he goes further forward because in a back three, they've got more opportunity to spread across, make themselves bigger. And then the next two people, you've got Hoybier and Sissoko. Now, this is where the problem for me comes in, but we'll just run through the rest of the team. You then had Tangi, Son and Kane. So our formation was actually 3-4-1-2. So... You had Tangi was our one, and then two strikers in Harry and Son. I completely understand why he's gone with the people he's gone with. I get it. Sissoko is the inclusion that I'm most concerned about. I know exactly why Jose's done it. With the three at the back and Sissoko in front, when both of the, the wing backs bomb on, we know that Sissoko is very good at getting into cover the right back position. He doesn't venture forward too much. It's not his strength. And he does do a good job for us when he's in that position. Problem I have with that at this stage of the season, we know that any slip ups mean we're not in it. The way we've been playing so far with this caution of maybe having a couple of people that are ready to sit back in case we lose possession when we're further upfield has kind of led to our problems. I would have actually gone with Tangi back in there instead of Sissoko and then had Mora in the number 10 role. I feel like that would have added more fluidity to the team because, again, we weren't good enough with the ball in the transitions from defence to midfield, midfield to attack. And I feel like with Sissoko in there, you can't just rely on Hoybier to be the link-up between the holding midfielders and Lucas Moura and the front line. It, it's just not going to work, and it didn't. So I, I completely understand why Jose's done it, to add a bit of protection. But at this stage of the season, you just have to go for it. Like I know Everton are a good side, and they've been in a bit of a slump. But you can't play and set up in a way that you're almost saying to them, 
if you come out and play well today, we've got the players sitting back to to deal with it. What I would rather is we went out there and say to them, this is our lineup, you deal with that. And it kind of wasn't there. And I think it gave it gave Everton hope, gave them the ability to come on to us. And I, th- I think we missed a trick there. I genuinely think had Tangi played next to Hoybier, we'd have had that excellent ball carrier delivering the ball into Lucas Moura. But it just wasn't to be. So all in all, I didn't mind the formation. I just didn't like the personnel that he put in there. Now if we look at our subs bench, Sanchez, Winks, Bale, Lamella, Hart, La Celso, Deli, Tanganga and Mora. So we saw Lamella and Mora were introduced on the 64th minute. They came in for Tangi and Region, which was interesting because Lucas Mora was being used as the wing back, albeit a very, very attacking wing back. And they added energy into the game, as they always do. They've both been brilliant with their tenacious pressing and their energy. Obviously, Lamella has this habit of running down dark alleyways and like a bit of a headless chicken. But there's there's no doubt they added some quality to the team and pushed us on a bit. Uh, The other substitute to come on was Delhi. Now, this was a forced substitution as Harry Kane went off with an ankle injury. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Now, the referee for the game, Michael Oliver. And once again, another penalty. Seems to give a lot of penalties against Jose Mourinho sides. And on VAR, Andre Mariner. So if we talk about the game itself, first 27 minutes, pretty uneventful. And then we have a goal, 1-0. Against the run of play, really. I wouldn't say we deserved it. Like We weren't that creative. It came from... A keen mistake. And uh, Holgate wasn't too much better either there. So the ball's come over. Keane's gone for a header. Not connected with it properly. It's then come back into the path of Harry Kane. And it's only really landed in the path of Harry Kane. Because Holgate for some reason was down for almost like a diving header. I, I genuinely feel like he thought it was going over Keane. And had Keane not touched it. Holgate would have cleared the ball. But, you know, poor communication between them two. Ball falls to Harry Kane. One touch, pops up, bang, volley into the left-hand side of the net. Keeper never had a chance, really. Decent finish. League didn't last long, though, did it? Four minutes later, Everton get a penalty. And VAR, once again, didn't overturn it. Michael Oliver pointed to the spot very quickly. So what's happened here is Hammers Rodriguez is bursting into the box. Reguilón's chasing him. As Hammers pulls his leg back to take the shot, there's contact between him and Reguilón. He goes down. Uh, whistle's blown. Reguilón gives an initial, like, what? And then after that, there's no kind of protest from the Spurs players at all. They've just accepted it. And Gilfie Sigurdsson does what he does best. Penalties, set pieces. You know, he's a specialist in that area. Bang, puts it in the back of the net. Uh, Regards to the penalty, some people are saying it is, some people are saying it isn't. For me, I don't think it's a penalty. I don't think there's enough there. It's very soft. Some people are saying it's reckless from Reguillon. But the thing is, he's, he's running back at some pace to try and catch Hammers Rodriguez. He's doing his job. It's just a bit unlucky. I think my problem with VAR is this reasoning as to why they do and don't overturn referees' decisions or at least ask them to go check the incident. Because Michael Oliver has blown up so quickly and at full pace, you can understand why he's blown. But I think VAR, the the thing that we've got wrong is it has to be a clear and obvious error. I think that needs to be eradicated. Like You don't get in tennis... um, all this stuff, like if the ball is like a centimetre, no, sorry, like a millimetre out, oh, well, we, won't, we won't call that. We'll say that that was in instead of out because it wasn't a clear and obvious error because at, at full pace and where the lines are, it's very hard to see. No, that's not the case. Cricket. You know, they don't turn around when, when there's the appeals and go, right, let's have a look at that. Oh, 
it was only just going to hit the top of the bale and knock them off. So we'll say that, that that's not out because it wasn't a clear and obvious error. Look, at the end of the day, if the call is wrong, whether it's clear and obvious, it does not matter to me. The fact is it shouldn't have been a penalty, so therefore it should be overturned. And I think that's the way VAR needs to go. It shouldn't be about the pride of the referees. Look, referees are going to make mistakes. The game is played at an incredible pace. You have players that can get in the referee's view, the angle that the referee is currently standing at. Look, I don't have any qualms with Michael Oliver for getting the decision wrong because at full time, at full pace, sorry, there is an argument that it looks like a penalty. The fact is, when you look at it on the replays, the VAR should be saying to him, look, it's not a clear and on an obvious error, but have a look at it, shouldn't be a penalty, tell us what you think, overturn it. That's the way VAR needs to go. There's no point in having VAR if we only eradicate some mistakes. It should be there to correct all mistakes. But hey-ho, is what it is. Um, after that point, Everton kind of really grew into the game. They were better than us in pretty much every position. And they Second half, 62 minutes in. Gilfie Sigurdsson again has the ball in the back of the net. Two for him now. And I do think a little difference in the game. Seamus Coleman comes on. The guy's brilliant. I love Seamus Coleman. Very good player. Very good mentality. Comes bursting down. Plays the, the cut back into Silkerson. Silkerson? Into Sigurdsson, who first time finishes, put the ball in the back of the net. It's a good play from Everton. I think we could have done more. Reguilon could have been better. I suppose you can argue that Reguilon's been running up and down all game so far and Seamus Coleman has come on, set fresh legs. But based on the age difference and the pace that Reguilon has got, you'd expect him to do better there. But their lead didn't last long either. 68 minutes. Um, Harry Kane, another goal and another mistake from Everton. More poor communication between Keane and Holgate. So Holgate is going for the ball and then pulls out because I think he gets a call from Keane. But Holgate's momentum keeps him drifting back because where he's jumped, he's jumping backwards. And Keane's come rushing in. He makes the header, but by this point, they're like that far away from each other. So Keane doesn't make a fully committed header. He headers the ball straight into the, the back of Holgate. Ball falls to that man, Harry Kane. Another sweet volley. Into the back of the net. Uh, I mean, both our goals technically were from crosses. But they weren't great crosses because they both should have been dealt with. They were both put into the central area where Harry Kane wasn't. He was further back. So in terms of the crosses, they weren't great. They weren't even half chances. They were hopeful crosses put into the box. And both our goals have come from Everton mistakes. But nonetheless, we'll take it. It puts us back in the game. But I mean, even from there, Everton could have gone on to nick the game. Uh, Lloris was forced into a save from Josh King. Rebound falls to Richarlison, who, I mean, really lashes at it. It was a um, dreadful shot from him, and that goes blazing over. So that that was that, really, up until you know the last minute or so where we see Harry Kane limp off with what looks like another ankle injury. Um... Will it be a serious one? I'm not too sure. We can't tell from that. I mean, this is the sort of injury that I pick up all the time. And a lot of the time, it's only for a few days. I'd expect to see him in the final. They might rest him for the next Premier League game. That would be the sensible thing to do. But it is what it is. Uh, so, yeah, a draw on the day. Probably a fair result if you look at the game as a whole. I mean, Everton will argue that they could have gone on to, to win the game as well. We both had the opportunity and the players on the pitch to do so. But we really didn't show the fight and desire of a team that is desperate for Champions League football. And I think that's the problem. Had this performance come, I don't know, early in the season, a draw at Goodison Park, based on the way they're playing, I don't think you come away from that saying, oh, we're rubbish and, you know, we need to sort ourselves out. I think you would you'd look at it as not too bad a result. And it's the same with the Manchester United game that we played last. You know, we didn't play terribly. And in this game, we didn't play too badly. But the problem is, at this stage of the season, with the players we've got, with the questions we're asking constantly of our players, 
it just wasn't good enough. There needs to be more hunger, more desire, more passion. You need to fight, 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 fight. Every last ounce of sweat should drip out of your body. That's why you have substitutions. But, you know, it's, it's, it's one of them again where it's a, an average performance that you expect from maybe a team middle of the table. Like at the moment, we're not looking like a top four team. So if, if we were to get top four, it's kind of unjust, really. I'd take it all day long, don't get me wrong, but, you know. Now, we talk about Harry Kane quickly. Kane's now got 164 goals. He overtook Robbie Fowler last night. Next up in his sights, Thierry Henry on 175 and Lampard 177. Now, if Harry Kane stays in the Premier League next season, which it looks like he will, um, based on what Levy said, there's a rumour going around that they've had a meeting and Levy has said... You're not going anywhere this transfer window. So you'd expect him to be at ours, scoring more goals. I mean, he could even reach the Thierry Henry one this season if he stays fit and bangs him in for the last few games. We have scored a lot of goals this season, so I wouldn't ride it off yet. But certainly he'll hit both of those next season. Now, the this is the statistics and... They don't read great. I mean, it, it's fairly even for the game, and I think that's my problem. So possession, 52% to Everton. Jules, Everton, 50.5%, 90, uh, 49.5 for us. So again, very even. Aerial Jules, 50-50. Uh, interceptions, Everton 8, us 7. Offsides, 2 for Everton, none for us. Corners, 6 to Everton and 3 for us. My biggest issue looking at this, I think, is the offsides and corners. Like, you can look at it with not getting any offsides given against you, saying, oh, well, we did well there. We obviously, you know, didn't overrun and things like that. But my problem with that is we haven't attacked enough. That's the way I see it. We, we haven't got forward enough. Uh, corners. Again, only three corners in the game. That would tell you that the shots that we had were either too close to the keeper and they were easy saves for him or there's a lot that have gone wide or fallen back out to their defenders and have been cleared away. So I think when you look at the offside and corners, it, it just goes to show our lack of attacking prowess in that game and it could have been so much more had you swapped a few players out, I personally think. Uh, let's talk about Jose. What he basically said after the game is two teams that are, like, have a lot of similarities, which he also said in the build-up to the game. A good game from both teams that tried to win. Mm. Did we, though? Did we really try to win? Like, I have no doubt the players wanted to win, but to me, there's a difference between being in the game and trying to win. Um said it was a fair result and I think we can all agree it was a fair result on reflection and too early to speak on the Harry Kane incident. So I think he said in his press conference after the game that maybe we'll have news Tuesday. So I think that we'll have to wait till Tuesday to find out. So next up for us is Southampton at home. Uh, that's a very winnable game. That is at home on Wednesday the 21st. That's a 6pm kickoff. And then after that, we have a cup final against Manchester City, which we're hoping that Harry Kane is fit for. But if he's not, what will be interesting is to see what sort of lineup we go with. So I, I, I don't know about the cup final. A, a lot's going to depend on the formation he goes with, the players available the players that he picks. I don't know, but cup finals and, you know, 50-50 on the day, form doesn't really mean anything. It's just the team that turns up on the day or a little bit of luck, as we saw in the Champions League final against Liverpool. That Sissoko handball, that kind of moulded the game there. So, yeah, that's that. Everton's next game up, they're playing Arsenal away. That'll be a tricky fixture for them. But, you know, we've got to remember that They've got that game in hand. 
So that game's left us in seventh. Five points off the, the top four now. And Everton stay where they are in eighth. They're six points off. But they win that game. In hand, they leapfrog us. So although it wasn't the worst performance, again, it's a disappointing result. And uh, I think we may have to accept that we might not even get Europa League football this season. And although it's devastating, it might not be the worst thing to happen to us. Like we've had a lot of games this season, loads and loads of minutes. And because Jose hasn't rotated as much as maybe we'd have liked him to, there's a lot of tired players out there. And we do seem to look unfit and sluggish towards the end of games. So maybe a season out of Europe might do us some good. You've only got to look to Chelsea. You know, the season they had no European football, they ended up winning the league. Like, it does make a difference. Your players are a lot fresher. So you don't have to rotate all the time because you keep your main men fresh. But we'll see. We'll see. So that's it for today. Um, thank you for sticking around. Hopefully you enjoyed what unfortunately couldn't be a happy happy video things just aren't going our way at the moment so it is what it is as i said thanks for sticking around and um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already if you enjoyed the video support it with a thumbs up and you can turn on the bell notifications so you get notified when the next video goes live and as always guys stay safe and come on you spurs